Good evening, y'all. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it's just uh, 8 o'clock now on Sunday evening, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, I have been playing this week with some of the new stamp sets from the 2017 Holiday Catalog, which went live for demonstrators on the 1st of August and will be available to customers on the 1st of September. Uh, fun fact, if you sign up during the month of August, uh, you can use the new items in the catalog as part of your starter kit. So this is a pretty good time to join up. So one of my very favorite stamp sets, and I, you know, I'll probably say my very favorite stamp set about every stamp set that I use between now and the end of the catalog because there's a bunch of great ones. But this one in particular, um, it's called Christmas Happiness, and um, I love it, and if you know me at all, you know why, and it's because of the pine cones and the pine boughs, and then when we add in Christmas lights, um, I don't know about y'all, but white Christmas lights on a Christmas tree, that does it for me every time. Doesn't even have to be a live tree. That's that's how easy I am. So this is the card I made. It is in response to a request from my mom. She has a friend who lives in Colorado in the mountains with her, near her. Um, but due to some failing health issues, they are going to be moving to Arizona. So she's not real happy about that. Arizona is kind of a big difference. Um, hey y'all. Hey Jean. Hey Julie and Kathy and Patricia. Yay, you made it, Patricia. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, sorry for that, that little interruption. Anyway, she's moving to Arizona, and my mom wanted to send her a little card and said mountainy would be a good theme, and that is kind of in my wheelhouse. So this is using the Christmas Happiness Set, and I pulled a couple of sentiments from Wild About Flowers, which is a current... Hi, Denise. Hi, Christina. Um, this is a current stamp set, and it's uh, actually kind of aimed towards retirement and new adventures and things like that, but um, if you read the sentiment, it also is just good for saying goodbye to someone who's been a friend. May the very best life holds for you be yours in the days and years ahead. And then on the inside, I stamped another pine bow and... Um, what is that called? Yes, a pine cone. <laughs> and you'll be missed. So... And of course there's the envelope, no naked envelopes. And do you recognize the paper? No, probably not because it's brand new. This is from the Merry Little Christmas DSP in the new stamp in the new catalog. It's very pretty. It's old olive, basic black, and whisper white. Those are the colors throughout the entire DSP stack and it's it's really cool. Hey Paula, how are you? Um, I think we've got some of the weather that you guys had last week. It's storming, so Hopefully I'll stay live and uh, Comcast won't drop us. All right, so let's get started. Uh, now I'm just going to tell you up front, right off the bat, that this little edge right here that I did with the uh, Ticket Tear Border Punch, um, well, you know, it uh, it's kind of like doing math in public. So we're going to see how well that works. And if it doesn't, we're going to modify quickly on the go. We'll call an audible and make this just a straight edge. So I'm going to give myself one shot, and then we're going to drive on. All righty? So, let's go ahead and get started, and this will be the card that is on tomorrow on my blog, so you'll be able to get all of the card cuts um, tomorrow, not to worry. Hey Karen, Julie, wish it would storm at least rain, yes, yes, um, yeah Paul, these, they're making a lot of noise, they didn't look too severe right now, so hopefully it'll stay that way, I, I'm not a big fan of severe weather, so... All right, so our card base, I'm using the Thick Whisper White and is my normal size four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half. And then I have an envelope. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, you can tell because it's got a flap. Yeah, it's a, a little flap. I've got some of the DSP to cover that flap later. We'll set those things aside for a moment. And then I have my pieces that I'm going to make my front with. I've already cut a piece of basic black. This is uh, three and seven eight, or sorry, four inches wide by about three and seven eighths long at the longest point. So we will cut this and then um, trim it down so that it fits correctly. 
Then I have a piece of, uh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Deborah. Yes, the paper is beautiful. I, I love it. Um, hang on just a second, people. Hang on just one second. All right. Hang on one moment. Murmur amongst yourselves. Hi, Brooke. I'm not sure if you can hear me. I may have missed your comment. It, it, uh, so y'all, just so you know, this kind of gives me four or five comments at a time on my screen, and then it scrolls down as people add. So if I don't give you a shout out, it's not because I'm blowing you off. It's just because I didn't see you. So anyway, this is our card front from Merry Little Christmas DSP, and it is three and seven eighths wide by five and one eighths long, and its mat is four inches by five and a quarter. And then we'll have a whisper white inner liner with the same exact dimensions. Okay, so let's do the scary, scary hard part first. How about that? All right, so when I made the card to start with, um, what I did is I just measured one inch up from the bottom corner on both sides and measured the halfway point of my piece of cardstock and then I made a cut on both ends with my trimmer and then I trimmed it with the um, tear and what do you call it? ticket tear border punch okay so we're gonna do that again and see if that works out and like I said if it doesn't you know hey Jean hey Brooke I see you there glad you made it all right so this is the width wise so I'm going to find the halfway point um, hopefully my noggin won't get in the way. So halfway of three and seven eighths is one and a half plus three and a half eighths. Mark it right there. And then go up one inch on both sides. I tried to make one to have ready just in case and I got it all cattywampus. So confidence is low people right now. Confidence is low. We're going to see what happens here. All right, let's see if we can do it. Y'all, I'd like you to uh, collectively cross your fingers, hold your breath, and say a little prayer that Mary can make it work when she needs it to work on public TV. Here we go. Okay, so really all I'm doing here, folks, you can see, is here's the cutting trough of my trimmer, and here's my one inch up mark and the center point mark. And I'm just going to make a quick cut like that. And then I'm going to line the other direction. Just like that. And make a quick cut that way. All right. So far, so good. All righty. Now. Here we go. Everybody, you shouldn't even be breathing yet, so don't be breathing. It's not time to breathe. So I'm just pushing that up against there like so. And then... I'm going to cut like that. I'm trying to line up the first cuts with the punch. Yeah, that worked out pretty good. Then we'll just give that a little trim right there. Sorry, I have to stop talking because otherwise I'll just screw that up bigger than Dallas. Hey, Sue. Thanks for joining me. Now we're going to see if I can go this way. I already feel it going off cattywampus, so this may end up being a straight cut this time, folks. It just may end up being a straight cut. We'll see. This is a very nice little punch, but it works a lot better when you're just trying to do a straight cut. See, that didn't work at all, so hang on. Hang on, everybody hold your mouths just right. Hold your mouths just right. Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here, peoples. See if it'll look about right. Or if it's all cattywampiossed. 
See, it's all candy wampus. So we're gonna just uh, we're gonna call it put paid to that today, folks, because I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm just not because I think uh, you see where it is. You see what my problem is. Actually, I could probably fix that, but you know it could take us a month of Sundays to get it done. So we're not gonna do it. Just put it. Just understand it did actually work when I did it for my other card obviously because you can see it's there see my point should be right about there so to heck with that hang tight flip it over and see if it fits that's a good idea I'm, I'm gonna do that I'm flipping it over and see, but it isn't see it's all cattywampus can you tell it's cattywampiness it's cattywampiness it's cattywampiness yeah see it won't be right it just won't be right it won't be right and so we're gonna do it right so I'll save that and use it and this is actually correct, so we'll make it a straight, and I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. Alrighty. Yeah. That's depressing, isn't it? A little depressing, and you know. But it just shows to Goya that it's not always perfect the first time. Now, if I wasn't sitting here, if I wasn't sitting here online with you guys and taking up your day, I would probably, I would fuss with that. But I'm not going to fuss with it because you guys have better things to do than watch me fuss with this. Y'all already going to have to watch me do some fussy cutting some fussy cutting you know what I'm saying all right so that looks much better fix that with my little sander right there like so the sander fixes much evils much evils all righty close enough for government work yeah that's true I could go with that all right, so now, what if that's not still just wonkies? I'm just not, I'm wonky today, people. I'm just wonky today. Huh. Oh, well. well, we're going to fix that a little bit right there. Now I'm going to cut, let's, let's sand that a little bit. What I'm going to do is this piece here is 3 and 7 eighths to the tip. So I'm going to cut this piece 3 and 3 quarters to the tip. And then it will be just about parfait. Look at that, it's almost parfait right now. Okay. How did I do that? How? Where? Where did I get my sander? You know, I probably got my sander at Michael's, Karen, because I went to look it up the other day because I had momentarily lost it, which is to say it was in my little craft thingy drawer. <laughs> but it was covered with stuff, so I had lost it. But I'm pretty sure I would have gotten it at Michael's. Um, or probably not Hobby Lobby, because I bought it when I was in Florida down there, and I don't think we had a Hobby Lobby nearby. All right, so now we're going to stamp the... Um, we're going to stamp a couple of the pine boughs near the top, and I'm going to use Old Olive and Always Artichoke just to give it a little bit of, you know, some dimension. And let's see, I'll put my little mat under there. Alrighty. Anyway, I looked for it on Amazon as one of my previous orders, and I hadn't done one, so I'm pretty sure it would have been from Michael's. All right. And we'll get that going like so. 
give it a quick wipe off. I haven't shopped at AC Moore either, Paula, but um, a friend of mine down there said she shops there. I Somehow in my head, AC Moore is um, paint, but it isn't. That's some other thing that's paint. But they do shop at AC Moore for their crafting supplies. They also have Michaels, which, um, in fact, when I was there in 2014, they had a Michaels entirely too close to me. So the only thing, only place I spent more money at than Amazon was Michael's. And now I have thousands of pounds of things, of uh, stamps that are not stamping up that I no longer use and are going to our garage sale on Saturday. Mary, cover my pad. I will, yes, yes ma'am, hang on, hang on, hang on, cover my pad, cover my pad. Oh, you mean this pad? Ah, probably, but I just wipe it off. You can see it's still got a little embossing paste on it. It wouldn't come off. Okay. Good point. I should cover my pad, probably. But if I did all the things I should do, I'd probably be a much better person. Okay. So, now our little um, pine boughs are there. Yes, I got that. I, not to say I have never inadvertently put ink in a place that I didn't need it because I hadn't covered my workspace. All right, now I'm going to put the pretty little sentiment from Wild About Flowers on. And I'm going to use my basic black archival ink to do that. You know, I'm getting to the point where I kind of wish every single stamp set came in photopolymer because I really like them. Now, I'm going to get my noggin in the way probably, people here. Okay. And the first time I did this, I was a, I, for a minute I was kind of worried because I'd put the pine boughs where my sentiment was going to be and then it ended up where the sentiment was kind of nestled in there and covered a little bit and I, I actually liked it so so you can see I just did it again okay now let's set this aside let us set this aside and um, note to self just is really important people the basic black archival ink does not dry as fast as other ink. So give it plenty of time. Don't like rub your fingers over to go, oh, that's so pretty, because it's going to go every which way from Sunday, I promise, um, in places you just don't want it to be, if you know what I'm saying. Not that that's ever happened to me, only every time. So, now these are fun sets in the Christmas Happiness. You can see there are three different sizes of pine cones. You get the outline shape and then you get a fill shape. And I'm just going to use the two larger ones and the two larger one fill-ins. Those are the mediums. And I'm going to stamp the outline with the basic black ink. And I'm going to stamp two of them. And one I'm going to fill in. Yes, all of us do, in fact. Um, I think what it takes, Jean, to get a better image is you got to stamp it around good. You can see my sentiment was a little light. I probably needed to hold it a little longer. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just because it's this felt pad. And apparently there's something about the... Uh, um, chemical makeup of the archival inks that they can't use the new um, the, I'm sorry this is the linen pad they can't use the new pads like all of the other classic inks are so yeah it does and then the other trick is to kind of hold it a minute like that yes it's the uh, silicone mat Kathy 
and it does wa wash off pretty well, wipe off. Okay, so now while I have my ink pad open, let's go ahead and stamp the second little dude. Why don't you get out of my way? There you go. Okay, we'll stamp the second little guy. And it helps to just hold it a beat or two. And then um, I don't particularly care if it smears a little bit on this stamp because this is what I'm going to be, I'm going to be fussy cutting these. So my next images, I'm going to make one in early espresso. The large one will be early espresso. And then the small one is going to be soft suede. And we'll just get this inked up. Yes, I think I think we should do a million demonstrator march and just say we want all photopolymer. Okay, I gotta get it closer to me, people. Sorry. It may go out of the screen for a second so I can line it up. There we go. And then the other one will be in soft suede. Now, if I was a really good photojournalist or videographer journalist blogger person, I would do this like this and then I would invoke the magic of video and pull out two pine cones already completed. But I did not. And so you have to watch me fussy cut them. Sorry. All right, let's get this out the way for a moment too. And just cut them out to start with. And this is not terribly hard. I was thinking the other day when I was making this it's actually easier to fussy cut right on the outline than it is to give it a little border. So I decided that by golly by gosh I was going to do a little border because why not make it harder than it needs to be? I mean really. So there we go. We'll just do it. Remember push your cardstock up towards the back of your scissors and by the back I mean back here and don't turn the scissors, turn your paper when you're fussy cutting. Also, I don't think it matters if it's not perfect. I'm pretty confident it doesn't matter to anybody but me. And there are some spots I will go back and fix. Not to worry, once I get done with these two, it does go pretty quickly, so you will not be here until midnight, I promise. And I've heard that the lightning, the thunder seems to have stopped, so that's good news. It bodes well for my internet. You know, you guys, do you know how glad I am that I have a dog who is not afraid? Of lightning and thunder. It is so nice. Poor old Buck, he was terrified of them. He did not like the storms at all. Finn just doesn't even seem to acknowledge that they're happening. So that's good. I like it. Alrighty. That's gonna be good enough. Got one little spot right here I don't like. Close enough. Who said it? Close enough for government work. Yeah. All right. Hey, you guys. Guess what? Yes, the other day. So this month, Stampin' Up! got all of our reports done early. And so on, let's see. I'm going to say Monday or Tuesday of last week, I cashed in my flex points for my cruise next year. Woohoo! 
So now it is official. I'm going on a cruise in July of 2018. Which also means that I cannot just blow my diet because every time I see people do videos from the incentive trips, there's people who are in there whether they wanted to be or not. And then they're, you know, I can't have my fat hindquarters in people's videos. So now that's another little bit of incentive to stick with the diet. Your kitty hides behind your storage bins, huh, Karen? That's My kitties get pretty scarce when there's a big thunderstorm going on. They're better than they used to be, but part of the problem, I'm pretty certain, is that when it gets really nasty like that, I get scared. And then they get scared. They, I'm sure they know that I'm scared, and if I'm scared, there must be a reason to be scared, right? So that's not good. I try really hard to keep it under control, but... Mm -mm, I don't do it very well. Especially if there's like, you know, that when the sky gets green and, you know, the tornadoes are on their way. Yeah. I don't handle that at all well. Give me an engine out on my airplane any day of the week. All right. There are two fussy cuts. Hey, Pamela. How are you? I'm, I don't think you missed much. You missed me not being able to make my card exactly like the original was. But, you know, it is what it is. All right, so now what I'm going to do is use a little liquid glue and put my panel, which, by gosh, if it's not dry now, it never will be. That's a little trick I learned the other day. Turn it upside down on your grid paper, give it a rub. If you don't have any black on your grid paper, your ink is dry. But I do want to fix that because I don't like that right there at all. Obsessive much, Mary? Okay, here we go. And then, once I get this done, we're going to put some ribbon and some of the new jute twine. The new jute twine is the best of the best. I love it so much. I hope it sticks around forever. Alrighty. There we go. Turn it over and give it a rub. Oh yeah, if you've got four, you can handle it. one out. The one out's nothing. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. All right, let me get some ribbon. That's not it. We shouldn't use that one. That's a pair of pizzazz. Guys, I need to get another ribbon holder from Stampin' Storage. I am maxed out here. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece around this like so. So, we'll cut it off and uh, use some non-stampin' up scotch tape. I love scotch tape because I can buy it at Costco by the gross. All right. Like so. You see I'm getting on there like that. And then here comes my new my new jute twine and we're gonna wrap it twice around just above it um, you'll see I was I was going with a sketch challenge this week MFT sketch challenge and I actually turned it on its on its end to make it a vertical because that seemed to me that it was going to work better for my for what was in my head. You guys, don't you guys love it when you see a, something and all of a sudden, and your brain just gives you the sketch, you, you know, or it gives you the card, and you can see it in your head, and you know exactly what you need to do to make it work and to make it happen. I love when that happens, as opposed to the days where I sit here just looking at my stamps, going, "Hmm, <laughs> I wonder what I could make today." I think I should make something. I probably should make something, but I wonder what I should make. I don't even know. 
Oh, you know what? I don't know if this is the same size. That's a good question, Julie. I will, uh, I've got that, so I will check that when we get, when I get done here to see, because that would have been a really easy way to, to cut that, wouldn't it? Why do something the easy way if you can do it the hard way? That's my motto. Alright, there we go. Just like so. And the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to do some dry fitting. I want that little dude under there like that. Don't want him covering my sentiment. Like so. And then this guy is going to be right there. And I'm going to pop him up on dimensionals. Okay. So let's just stop yakking about it and do it. Doesn't ever happen to. <laughs> I'm glad, Kathy, it's good that nothing ever happens to you. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right, there we go. There we go. And then let's put a dimensional or two. No, not those little tiny ones. Where are you? There you go. We'll put a couple of dimensionals on the smaller little guy here. Oh, no inspiration. Ah, got it. Oh, I get it. It never happens to you where you see a card in your head. Well, I don't think I believe that, Kathy. I think, I think you're fibbing. I think you're fibbing. Okay, you can tell that wasn't quite down. Alright, now look at these new um, little embellishment here. Little embellishments. These are the Year of Cheer embellishments from the ha Holiday Catalog. And they're kind of fun. Okay, they're a lot fun. I really like them. There's two designs. This little um, berries dude and a star. And you get them in two colors, which I think is pretty darn fun. I love that in particular. So I'm going to use gold on this card because I think it works better with my color scheme. And I'm going to use a glue dot to put it on. People back me up here. <laughs> You're cracking me up, Kathy. <laughs> All right, so a little glue dot under the little guy. And then I'm going to kind of nestle him under that popped up one, like so. And give it a little push, a little push. And then I'm going to cut a piece of my jute twine and make a bow. Make a bow. A bow. That's me trying to speak French. How'd that work out? There we go. Isn't this gorgeous? I just love this. It's just as easy to work with as the linen thread, but it gives you a little more heft for your for your time. All right, and then we're gonna put him right there. And I used liquid glue the first go round, but I think I'm going to use a glue dot this time. Just stick that right on the back. And kind of put it there so it's over the base of my embellishment. And don't push it quite so hard because that didn't work out like I wanted. Okay. And then we'll trim up his little tails, like a yes, like a sit. All right, and you sit there for a second while I get the rest of the card ready. All right, now I'm going to take my Merry Little Christmas DSP and use a little quick fast fuse and put it on its black mat. And then we'll move inside right quick. And we'll be getting you. Kathy, I think everybody has days where they have no inspiration. That's just a thing. And I have this theory 
the more of a pain in the hindquarters that work is being, the less sleep you're getting, and the more things on the to-do list, the more likely you are to have those moments of lack of inspiration. All right, now, on my other card, I, um, <laughs> On my other card, this was a completely different card except for how it's the same. On the other card, I put this onto my card front first, and then I wrapped the twine. But I didn't do that this time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call an audible, and I'm going to pop this panel up on the card front <clears throat> on Stampin' Dimensionals. I'll use the minis up there in the corners and down at the little tip. And then I'll use the biggins, the biggins, right out here. And we're going to give it a good little bit of support. Can never have too many dimensionals. I don't believe, I just don't think it's humanly possible to have too many dimensionals on a card. That's why I'm going to buy stock in the Dimensionals Company. I don't know who that is, but I need to buy stock in them. Don't y'all think you need to buy stock in Dimensionals? Dimensionals and Tombow. I wonder if Tombow is a publicly traded company. We don't know. All right, pull those up. You know, I find these everywhere, these little sticky things. Do you find them in places they shouldn't be? Like sand from the beach? If you're picking up what I'm putting... I didn't never find them don't be silly, Mary. But I do find them where they shouldn't be. I do. I do. I'm not even kidding. Okay, here we go. I gotta fix that. That's driving me crazy right now. Okay. That's much better. Jeez. Jeez. Alright, and then we're gonna just line this up with the top and the sides. A little more up little less down. Alrighty. There we go. And then when we put this on the card front, it's going to be, I'm going to use Fast Fuse. Thank you so much, Barbara. Yep, Dimensionals Tombow and Paper Towels. Yes, ma'am, you are correct. Alright, now I'm going to set this aside and we're going to make the inside. Just a reminder what it looks like. You'll be missed with our little soft suede pine cone down there in the bottom corner. And for that one, I just used Old Olive. Um, I don't know why. I'm not sure it really mattered. But that's what I did. Come here, silicone mat. Where did you go? Is it sitting right in front? Here it is. All right, here we go. First, we will uh, not make the mistake I almost made right there. Yep. No, I'm not going to do it because I'm, I'm going to pretend like I'm smarter than that. So I'm going to first put my pine cone on because that lets me know where the rest of my pine boughs. Oh, thank you, Christina. That's very sweet. All right. We're going to put him right there like that. Wait a beat or two. All right, and then that one is going to get soft suede, and we should use the small fill-in, otherwise it's going to look weird. All right, here we go. Okay. Now. I'm going to put in my pine boughs. Here we go. And there's not any particular rhyme or reason to it. But, you know, I didn't want a whole lot of pine bough over the top of my pine cone. And then we'll put some more right here. And I will let it get a little bit. All right. Now, I'm just going to go right there. 
I'm actually going to give it a little extra more than I did the first go round because I really like them. I really, really do. Okay, and then let's put us a sentiment also from Wild About Flowers, and it's going to be the You'll Be Missed. Uh, something just flipped out. Nope, it didn't. Okay. And we'll put it on here. And we're going to use our basic black archival ink again. And wait a beat to get a good ink image. Did not get a good ink image, so pull out the Stampin' Write marker and fix the bad ink image. Y'all know why I didn't get a good ink image, right? Y'all are smart stamping up people, so I know you know that it's because I did not put my silicone mat under there. Good enough. Now, in order to keep from smearing that, I'm going to make my envelope and then come back and put this on its mat and in the card. Because otherwise, yes ma'am. Hey Judy, is it my birthday today? No, not my birthday today. Not my birthday. Okay, so let's make us an envelope. And that is going to look very much like what I just did on the inside. So let us repeat. Repeat the inside, eh? Don't eh? repeat what you just did, eh? Now I'm talking pig Latin. No, I have no idea why. All right. Yeah, the mat makes all the difference in the, on the planet. It really does. It really, really do, Julie. And a soft suede. A soft suede. Some soft suede. All right, there we go. And some piney, piney boughs. My humble opinion, you can't have too many pine boughs on a card. You just can't. I think they're the best. I love them the most. I want them to stay forever. Yeah, I don't learn. I always hope, I use the old hope plan. You know, the one that says, well, maybe this time, this time I'll get lucky. <laughs> and it won't be a problem. <laughs> and then it's, it's a problem. I'm going to wipe that off. Just to be sure I'm not going to get ink where I don't want it, which is on the other side of my envelope. And then we'll put another pine bow there. And go like so. There. Parfait. Parfait. And then we'll put a little bit of the DSP on here with some liquid glue. Oh, Karen, I don't think you, you might not, well, no, you shouldn't need it with the photopolymers, I wouldn't think. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Um, one of the tricks on the two-step is if you can, if you're doing a light and a dark ink, do your dark ink first and then put the light ink over the top if you can because then you can see where it is. So in that case it worked out really good because I could see this image um, because it was black and then I was doing the, uh, the soft suede over the top. But it was a little more difficult when I was stamping the second image with, um, with the early espresso because it was kind of hard to see through the stamp to the image. But if the stamp -a jig works for you, then I would absolutely use it because that is one of my favorite tools. I mean, you know, seriously, for like $11, good Lord, what a handy tool that is. 
All right. Now, you know what would be another good tool? Would be a clapper so I could clap my hands and then miraculously my fussy cut scissors would show up there. There. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Jean. You're very sweet. Someday I want to have a discussion on stamping off. I never ever get a good second. Yeah. And it is harder even, Kathy, with a photopolymer image. The photopolymers, um, they tend to give up all of their ink on the first go. It's not to say that you can't do it. It's just, it's always kind of a, kind of a crapshoot, I think, with the photopolymers. I'll see if I can make a card that takes stamping off, and then we'll make one on Sundays and see. See, you know, because when all else fails, make something hard on video. But I know you guys will understand. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I did get a little ink there, but it doesn't matter. There's going to be a return address and then some stamps, and it'll be fine. All right, now let's double check that I don't have ink where I don't want it. Very good. And some fast fuse. We'll get this all inked up. And I'm kind of pushing this out the way now because apparently that ink is trying to transfer. And I'm fixing to use the equivalent. See what I mean about those things everywhere? I'm fixing to use the equivalent of a white t-shirt for me. A whisper white card base. Dun dun dun. I might as well just say, here, put a big stain right here. Well, I don't know if that's actually the reason or not, Kathy, but it seems like it to me. It seems like to me, once you stamp a photopolymer stamp, there's really not much left on it. And if there is, it's kind of, it's not always very even. Are you also having trouble doing clear stamps or wood stamps? Um, is that why SU keeps making the rubber ones? I'm not sure. Is it because of the stamp -a jig or because the photopolymers don't stamp off? I'm not, I'm not sure what the question is, Julie. Remember, you gotta use small words for me. Alright, here we go. Now we're gonna put this inside our thick Whisper White card base. Hopefully without getting ink on places we didn't want ink. Always a crapshoot. Okay, there we go. Am I out of frame now? Completely out of frame. You know what? Let's just be. Let's just not be silly here, Mary. I'm gonna just double that up right quick so that I have a clean surface to lay my pristine white t-shirt card on and then we're going to use some fast fuse and put the front on now when you see my description tomorrow in the blog post you'll see this is going to be a little different because um, on my original card I, f I did the liquid glue to put the sentiment panel to the card front and then I popped the entire card front onto the card but since I did my ribbon differently on this card I kind of had to change that up a little bit alright make sure I've got it straight and the right side up you ever opened up your card and realized you'd put the inside on upside down or vice versa? The upside on the inside and the outside on the upside downy? Yeah, I have. Too many times. Alrighty. And there is our card ready to go with its matching envelope. Alrighty. So. I am so sorry I was unable to get that correct, uh, that t ter ticket tear thingy going, um, but it is what it is and it is the foibles of card making. So I hope I've answered your questions. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a good time even if I was being goofy. 
and I appreciate you spending some of your Sunday night with me. Hopefully I'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye.